Hello everyone, as I said in the last video, playing the victim and villain in horror films is kind of like playing high and low status. The victim being the low status and the villain being the high status. Or so we think. Are the villains always high status? Well, they certainly want to be, or that's what we're meant to think when we first watch these films. I'm going to talk more about this in another video. For now, this video is going to focus solely on acting high status characters or the villain. So, high status characters, how do they behave? Well, as some general pointers, their body is physically open, their movement is controlled and they don't rush. I must emphasise how general these points are. Things can get a lot more complex, but on the surface these are useful starting points to consider when you want to approach a high status character. Starting with the body is often a good way to begin if you don't know how to access that thought. Thought is primarily important, but your body language has to be on point. The first example I've got here is from a short film called Transpose. This is an interesting film because essentially the victim or lower status character's reflection is the villain or higher status character in the film. Notice how the reflection is more composed, controlled, they move slower. They are physically open and they are even smiling. High status characters are not afraid to initiate contact and this is another interesting point about them. The next example I'm going to show you is a short film about vampires. In this film, my character is this, um, she's like the head vampire of a vampire clan of three vampire women. Good, you're up. We need your vote. I've been thinking about things for a while now. Sure, yeah. Uh, I'll just change. That's fine. Okay. Maybe it's time. See in this clip how my character's eyeline is direct. She demands the company from the other character. She stands tall and movement is controlled. Her body is physically open and she is initiating all the contact. Also, high status characters seem calmer than the person of lower status, even when they might not be calm. You can't make a decision without me. Well, actually I can. But I'm asking you because I want to. I made you, Andy. Don't forget that. What if I say no? It won't matter. Then why did you ask me? In this clip, my character is being denied something. Watch how she attempts to hide the discomfort of this. If you look closely, you can see it in her eyes. She's not happy, but she doesn't want the other character to know this. On the surface, she is composed. It seems as if she doesn't let anything bother her. So even when something does, high status characters typically act calmer. This isn't to say that high status characters don't have anything that bothers them, it's just they are better at hiding it than the lower status character. This contributes to them having controlled movement, not rushing, physically open body language. Their deception is on another level. Here's another example. Compare my character to that of the other character. Don't you just love it? It's so exhilarating, you can feel everything. Where are we going? You need a snack. I have some bread. Not that kind of a snack. You need blood. What? Don't you know yet? My character is dancing about the woods. The other character is more tense. Her shoulders are more tense. You can see this in this clip. She's almost flinching. She's frowning. She's almost hunching over. Her arms are close to her body. She's not physically open. She's somewhat shutting down, closing off. My character stands tall and embraces her surroundings. She's not afraid. So, this has just been a quick introduction to playing high status characters or the villains in horror films. I must emphasise that the villains 
are by no means this two-dimensional. This is just one way of approaching the characters. Think about the body language. They will stand tall, their body will be physically open, they will not rush and be generally calmer. This doesn't mean that nothing will make them nervous or anxious or upset, they will just mask this more. The moment they show distress or nerves outwardly, that's the moment they lose their higher status and become lower. Lower status characters, as I said in the last video, are generally more erratic. They can't string sentences together. If you're interested in this topic, then please stay tuned for part three of this three-part series where I look at playing the victim and villain together and how the two seemingly opposing roles can actually blend into one another and they're not as different as they may seem on the surface. This can help present a more rounded three-dimensional character in film acting. If you have any questions then feel free to leave them down below in the comment boxes.